Hey everyone, and welcome to Today Matters. I'm so excited to be sharing with you this whole week. Yesterday, we saw David shift a perspective that allowed him to know how to fight the giant. We took away some great reminders, such as sometimes God is training us for a battle we can't see. Two, we serve a God who likes to show his power in the powerless. And three, sometimes all you need to do is to change your perspective, to have the tools to fight the giant right in front of you. Never let human limits limit our limitless God. Today we are going to talk about the art of battling your giant of fear. I remember the day Sean told me before we left for our trip to Yosemite that we were going to try to get permits to climb Half Dome. Permits were impossible to get, and we were just going to do the daily check-in to see if we could get the walk-up permits. We had a group of six of us, so each night we would check to see if we could get permits for the following day. For three nights in a row, we tried to get the permits and got denied each time. I was so excited because the probability of the fourth and last night for us to get the permits were pretty slim. However, sure enough, the fourth night we went to see if we could get them, and to my great disappointment, they had just enough for our group. Lucky me. There was no way out of this one. Heights are one of my least favorite things in the world and one of my greatest physical fears. I don't like getting myself into a situation that I'm not prepared for and I did not feel prepared for this hike slash climb. At 4 a.m. our alarm went off and we started the 16 mile round trip journey. It was eight miles to the base of Half Dome cables, but before you hit the cables to start climbing Half Dome, you need to get through Quarter Dome. This is a bunch of switchbacks that make you kind of feel like a drunk billy goat because the winds start up and it's at that point that you just don't feel steady on your feet. My fear started creeping in about this time and I found a little tree on the side of the mountain and I was not going to let go of it. You guys, I hadn't even made it to the cables and I was paralyzed with fear. I remember my girlfriend looking at me and saying clearly, Ty, take my hand. I've done this before and I know you can do it. It's amazing the power of someone believing in you and what it can do. I remember those words she spoke to me. They were such comfort. It was the only way I kept going. However, all I could think was, how in the world am I going to get this done? <laughs> you see, the last three years before this climb were some of the hardest years for me and my family. Climbing Half Dome and facing my fears was one of my ways of putting a stake in the ground and telling Satan, not today, not this year, and you no longer have this control. I was determined to conquer this mountain, this metaphor of a giant in my life. However, it was so much harder than I thought it would be. I got to the base of the cables and knew if I looked at the mountain too long, I would not start the climb. I had six in the group and the first couple had already got halfway up. Sean asked me if I wanted him to go in front of me or behind me. I decided I needed to go first. Well, I did, and I did what I needed to do. I put my earbuds in, and I pushed play to my worship music set that I had been fighting my battles for the last three years prior and started that first step towards the climb. Once I started, I didn't look back to see who was in front of me or behind me. I just kept climbing. I got halfway up and realized I was alone. It was a weird sensation, but I had peace. Sean wasn't there. I couldn't look down without freezing, so I knew I just needed to look up and keep climbing. It was just Jesus and me on this climb. I got to the top and waited and waited for Sean. Soon I realized he wasn't behind me. His legs cramped up, so he was stuck on the side of the cables until they could uncramp. He finally made it to the top, and I had a lot of relief until I realized that I needed to climb back down. Oh my goodness, most people actually die 
on the way down than they do on the way up the mountain. If someone would have offered me a helicopter to get out of the climbing down, I would have paid $10,000 just to get out of it. I know, I'm a little dramatic. At the end of the day, I started the climb down much like I started the climb up. One step at a time with some pretty cool friends, my husband and my Jesus, who helped me get to the bottom. It was a feeling like no other when I put my two feet on solid ground. I was celebrating not just because my fear of heights and making the climb. It was what those years prior represented. The fear of man, the fear of losing control, the fear of what others thought of me, the fear of letting go of needing to explain myself and letting God do what only he can do when we cast our cares on him. Listen to what Isaiah 43 says. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, O Israel. The one who formed you, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Isn't it rad to know that we have a God who walks us through the fire of our fears? We are never alone when we have our God by our side. Tomorrow, I'm going to be sharing about the art of staying focused on our mission and purpose. You don't want to miss tomorrow because today matters. Mm -hmm.